I've put together a series of challenges to test your web free skills. This isn't play to earn and there's no commercial intent. It's a fun way to learn a little bit about Ethereum, smart contracts and Solidity. My name is James Buccini and on this channel I create content about decentralized finance and blockchain development. Interested in learning more and subscribe to the channel and hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Okay, let's get started here. Let's open up a browser and go to ethereumhacker.com. Let me zoom in on this a little bit. So the year is 2032 and a major superpower is threatening to launch a central bank digital currency. This will threaten our global reserve status, the world's economy and democracy as we know it. A special team of black ops Ethereum hackers has been put together to prevent this happening. Use your web free skills to help the elite team prevent an economic and social collapse of society. So we've got six challenges here to start with. Some of them are very easy and they get harder and progressively harder over time. So we're gonna start with the first one, Gala NFT. There's gonna be some things that you need for these challenges. One of them is MetaMask. This is a browser wallet. You can download this from metamask.io and there's instructions here as well on how to do that. The other thing you're gonna need is some testnet ether. So all of these challenges are on the Gorelli testnet. So still MetaMask if you haven't got it already and then go down to Gorelli testnet, this one. It'll say Gorelli Testnet and Test Network at the top. I've already got some ETH in here, but there's a faucet where you can get free. So on a Testnet, the Ethereum that you have on that network is free. It's not worth anything. It's valueless and it's just used for testing purposes. The rest of this video is going to be a walkthrough of the various levels and how to complete them. So if you haven't done that yet, then feel free to pause the video and go and take a look at the site at ethereumhacker.com. In this first episode, Kathy is trying to get into a party, but they need to scan an NFT. She doesn't have an NFT, so we need to find a way to mint her one, and they're currently sold out. Let's open up the contract, and this will open up in Etherscan, or Etherscan. Let's zoom in a little bit so you can see, and go to contract. And we can see we've got the level onesol file here, which is a NFT project. So we've got an ERC-71 contract, which is like the standard for NFTs. And then we've got some additional functions here. We've got a mint function, which checks to see if the token ID is less than the max supply. I always need to increase the maximum supply. And then that will mint that to an address. And then the other thing we've got is an increase max supply function. So basically we need to figure out how to run that increase max supply function. We can actually do this from Etherscan. If we go to write contract, connect to Web3. We need to use our address here. So we're gonna copy that from MetaMask. I'm going, to I'm going to try this first without increasing the max supply to see if it fails. And we're going to copy our address from MetaMask, post that into the mint function. We'll need to sign a transaction here and pay a gas fee. Obviously, we're paying the gas fee in testnet ETH as well, so there's no cost or no real cost. Okay, we are unable to estimate the gas. There might be an error in the smart contract and this transaction may fail. So it's basically saying if that transaction is going to fail, which we can do anyway. So we first need to call increase max supply. Let's confirm that transaction, wait for that to go through. And once that's gone through, we should now be able to mint an NFT. That's been confirmed, it's gone through, and we've managed to increase the max supply of that contract and mint ourselves an NFT. That's in our wallet now. So we can let them know. Let's type done here. We need to connect our wallet up to the Ethereum hacker platform as well. You can do that with a connect or just connect the wallet here. And that means we can check if that NFT is in your wallet and complete the level. Great work, you complete the first level and the setup to take on the next challenge. Right, next level, find the whale. kathy has got into the party and now we're going to try and find out the whale's wallet address. So there's a person that we're looking for and he has the NFT uh, token ID number 45. Let's have a look at the NFT contract again. And we could actually do this one quite easily on Etherscan as well. But the instructions here are saying to go through to Remix. And, and the reason for that is that this is a really easy challenge or as easy as I can make it. And I want to do that so that people get used to using Remix and deploying contracts and to have something pretty, pretty familiar to start with. So let's head over to Remix. I think in a minute we should get an example contract here. So we can copy this code. Let's control C. Remix is an IDE or a kind of a development platform for writing Solidity code and interacting with the Ethereum network. Okay, we've got a blank workspace here, which is perfect. Let's call this level2.sol. 
paste that example contract which was in the instructions. And for this, all we need to do, instead of putting balance of message.sender, we just need to change that function to owner of sender. Actually, that's not true. We need to do it to owner of the NFT, which was number 45, I think. Notice that we're importing a library here as well. We're importing the Open Zeppelin ERC721 interface. It's just a really easy way of having this uh, interface that allows us to execute these functions for the ERC721 standard contracts. And then we can deploy this contract. So first let's compile it. So compile level two.sol. And then compiling the contract will show you if there's any errors or any obvious bugs. So we need to, there's a bug here. Um, and all we need to do is return an address rather than a Whereas before we were returning the balance, this time we want to find out who owns it, so we want to return an address with two S's. Let's compile that now, see if that gets rid of our, gets rid of our error. Bingo, got a little green tick. And then we can go on to deploy it. So that's the next tab down. And if we go to change the environment. This is on a local environment. So we want to change this to a injected web free. Injected web free just means use a MetaMask, basically whatever uh, network you're connected to. So this is the case it's Gorelli. One little gotcha is that we have to change the contract address here down to whale. I guess me almost every time. Let's go ahead and deploy that. To deploy a contract, we also need to pay a transaction fee. So we'll have to confirm that in MetaMask. Okay, so that's been deployed. And if we scroll down to deploy contracts, we can see we've got this contract at the bottom here. And if we expand this out, we've got this check balance function, which we should have renamed, but it returns the value of the owner of that NFT. We can copy this address, control C. Let's paste that into the chat window. And that's another level completed. The next challenge is hack the Oracle. And in this challenge, we have to have a look at an ERC20 token. So an ERC20 token is the standard kind of tokens you see on CoinMarketCap and governance tokens and things like that. It's a fungible token. So one uni token is worth exactly the same amount as another uni token. Let's have a look at the contract itself in Etherscan. And you can see, We've got a pretty standard uh, ERC20 here. There's an initial supply, inflation. We've got an address for the, pub, the central bank. So that's the user address or the deployer address. And it's set in the constructor argument. So a constructor argument will execute when the contract is deployed and it can only execute that one time. And it's minting the initial supply to the central bank address. It's also got this add oracle function, which takes a secret, a string, or a piece of text. And basically we need to find out what that secret is to complete the level. There's the add oracle function, and then further down, we've also got a test answer function, which is pure, which executes slightly easier if you're just trying to randomly guess it. And then we've got functions that is oracle, print money, and update price. So all we need to do is find out what this secret is. And there's a link to Twitter here. And this account has one tweet, which has a riddle. I have branches, but no leads. What am I? I'll give you a minute. What has branches like a branch of a shop or a high street bank? So let's go over to remix. And note before we do this, that if you ever get stuck on a level and you don't want to watch the video, you can always type help in the chat and it will kind of give you some more information. She's linking to the Twitter profile there. We could even do this on Remix or Etherscan. I'm going to do it on Etherscan here. So let's connect up our web-free wallet again. Add Oracle. Type in what we think the secret is. Wait for that to go through. And then if we go back to the chat, we can let them know. And that's it, free for free. Obviously, these first three challenges have been pretty easy, especially if you're a Solidity developer. They're about to get quite a bit harder, even if you wrote them yourself. Okay, episode four, market manipulation. We've got a 
prevent market manipulation in the central bank digital currency. So we need to set a price target of $463. This price target will change for each user. And let's go to the contract again. That's this one. You can see they've given us an a interface to work with, which will be a starting point for the contract we need to write to do this. So if we have a look at the source code and scroll down from the add Oracle section, which we've done in the last challenge, we have a update price function. This requires that we're an Oracle, so we need to complete that challenge first, and then we need a block hash. So the only way to do this is programmatically, so we need to do it in Remix. So let's go up to Remix now, and let's start a new contract. We'll call this level 4 or so. And you can see they've given this a interface to work with, so we can copy this in to start with. So we can take this section out because we already know the secret is bank. And then what I basically want to do is copy the code from the central bank digital contract because this will run at the same time. And then we just want to call the, we'll pass in a new price variable. I've got bugger on compilation. That's just because I forgot the semicolon. Let's try it again. Looks good. Let's go ahead and deploy this. Confirm that. Then we want to change, and then we want to change the price to four hundred and sixty-three dollars. So let's scroll down to our deployed contract. Let's go back and get them to check. You can type anything here, it doesn't really matter. Price target is hit, our market makers can do the rest. That should be another challenge complete. Okay, on to challenge number five, and this is the hardest challenge and probably the most interesting, I think. You have to think outside of the box a little bit. So the vast majority of the central bank digital currency funds are held in a multi-sig wallet, which I can't access. Let's have a look at the multi-sig wallet code. And we need to basically access this wallet so we can take some funds. So we've got an upgrade USDC, only the central bank can do that. We've got the withdraw funds func function. That's actually a bit of a red herring, we don't, we're not going to use that. We've got an update central bank function. And this is basically checking to see if your address is an Oracle address on the central bank digital currency. We don't have to break that in the last thing, so we know this is vulnerable. So we can essentially become the central bank. Once we've done that, we can upgrade USDC. Um, which changes the token contract address of USDC and create our own token so that it thinks that our own token, which we have infinite control over, is USDC. And then we can basically buy funds using this buy funds public function but instead of using USDC, which we don't have very much of, and we don't want to spend however much that is to get one, we can mint that many tokens and do it that way. So what would this look like as a smart contract? Let's head over to Remix. Let's create a new file, level 5.so. I'm going to copy it and paste this one in. I'm not going to live code this. It actually took me a while to figure this out. So we are importing two libraries, an interface and a token standard for ERC20. We've got an interface for the central bank digital currency because we need to add ourselves as an oracle. And then we've got an interface for the multi-sig wallet to do the three functions that we need. And then we're creating this ERC20 token. So my ERC20 is the ERC20, which is imported from the Open Zeppelin library. And then we're given two contract addresses, 0x94 and 0x55 for the central bank digital currency and then the multi-sig wallet. And then we're gonna create this our own token. So our token's called attack contract, AC tick symbol. And then we're gonna mint a load of it. 
a really, that's a massive amount because it includes 18 decimals as well. So function, attack, so central bank digital currency, add Oracle, then we're gonna do the update central bank function. So this is gonna check that we're an Oracle and then update that, update us so that we are the central bank. We're then gonna upgrade USDC to the address of this contract, which is the RERC20 token. And then we're gonna approve the spend. So whenever you use the transfer from function with an ERC20 token, you have to approve it first. If you use like Uniswap, you might have noticed this, you have to click approve and do one transaction and then click transfer to the second transaction. So we're gonna approve the spend of our own token and then we are gonna call the buy funds public. If we take a look at the buy funds public function, it's actually using the ERC 20 transfer form. And that's why we need to approve that the, uh, the contract, the multi-sig contract has approval to spend our tokens. And then finally, because the central bank digital currency tokens go to our contract address rather than ourselves, we need to transfer those out to our own wallet. So all of this is executing from the contract address. And that's quite tricky and something to get your head around if you haven't done it before. Let's go ahead and compile this. Changed contract to my ERC20. Deploy. That's gone through, let's expand that out. I've also got a lot of functions here because we've got uh, an ERC20 token itself, so we've got all the inbuilt functions as well. Let's put Oracle Secret in as bank, which we already knew from the previous challenges. And then let's confirm this transaction in MetaMask. So all that should do is run through all these different transactions, interacting with the different functions on the different contracts. And what we should end up with is one of the central bank digital currency uh, tokens in our wallet that has gone through. And as always, we can go back here, type anything in here, and that challenge is completed. Right, final challenge. Finish up by adding your name to the leaderboard. There's a leaderboard contract. This is actually using a little bit of assembly. So you need to complete level five first because it checks if you've got a balance of the central bank digital currency. The assembly code here is storing this to memory and then loading it again. It's just a way to obfuscate the data. We're using a hex string here as a binary representation of string data. What we can do is we can go easiest way to do this. We could create a function to do it, which would probably be more sophisticated, but we can also use a hex to text converter. Put in the hex, take away the zero X at the front. And you can see we've got a string, which is just congratulations. So this, that's the secret word if you want, if you like. And all we have to do here is put in your name, or your, I'm gonna use my Twitter handle here. You can put in whatever you want, keep it clean though in case any kids are playing. And then put in a secret, which we already know, which is congratulations. Execute that function and our name will be added. to the leaderboard. As you can see, this hasn't been played much. Uh, thank you to ZeroX Owl who helped found this really early and helped me debug it. And also to anyone that enjoys playing the game. If you have any feedback, let me know in the comments section. If you're interested in learning more about Solidity and blockchain development and subscribe to the channel, hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm and thank you for watching.